All day long, freight trains roar through the town of Marks in Quitman County, Mississippi, not even slowing down on the way to somewhere else. This was the poorest county in the poorest state when Dr. Martin Luther King visited here just before he was assassinated in 1968. Residents say he cried after seeing so many shoeless children. I saw hundreds of little black boys and black girls walking the streets with no shoes to wear. Since then, not much has changed for the better. Half of the young adults here are unemployed, part of the legacy of slavery and racism. This is a kind street. Now a pastor, Michael Josell, was 14 when Dr. King visited. Well, it's not quite the poorest county anymore, but it's right there at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, we still, still there. After Dr. King's death, the Poor People's March to Washington left from this little town, a community determined to move forward. Has the change that Dr. King was advocating no. for happened? No, it's not. The vision that Dr. King had was to raise us out of poverty. When he died, there was excitement, there was a big push, but I believe that we've kind of like settled back down. So, 55 years later, NBC News is taking a look at one factor in persistent generational poverty, illiteracy. What happens when kids start school behind and can't catch up? Can that trajectory be changed? Could your parents read? My mother, she went to eighth grade and had to quit school. My father went to about third grade. He knew how to write his name, but for us being illiterate and reading, he couldn't. Even today in Quitman County, 48% of adults struggle to read at even a basic level. All reasons the pastor's wife, Dr. Evelyn Giselle, launched a new preschool program, the Early Learning Academy. We're trying to show that when you intervene early enough that you're equipping young people to become better readers and ultimately better leaders. The idea is simple, a souped up version of Head Start with high quality teachers, small classroom size and a curriculum highly successful in getting kids ready to read. What does B say? And it's paid for by Save the Children. The parents that we work with they wake up in survival mode. How can I put food on the table? How can I keep my lights on? So education is not at the top of their things to do list. But does that make them a bad parent? No. Yolanda Miner, Save the Children's Mississippi State Director, worked with Dr. Giselle to get the school going. Parents want the help. You know, they want things that are sustainable. We're building their capacity. So this is something, education, you can never take away from somebody. So if we give it to you or even begin the process, no one can take that away from you. May I play too? Jennifer Garner, a Save the Children ambassador for the past 15 years, came by to take a look. We don't connect so many of the problems that teenagers and young adults are having with the fact that somebody failed them at the beginning. Yep. And you know who's failing them? We are as a society. It takes money. It takes government investment. The government should be funding programs like Early Learning Academy, not just here in Mississippi, but at all over the country. Whatever you do, do not give me a hug. Garner herself grew up in rural America and is a vocal advocate for the children who live there. <laughs> we have people who see no hope for the future, and that splashes backwards onto their kids. Who but feel invisible? Just, who they feel? feel invisible. What do you see? One goal, giving kids the skills they'll need to succeed in kindergarten. If you have not developed those skills and you get to kindergarten and you're asked to write your name, it might be really frustrating for you. You might actually find that you don't like it. And over time, that can lead kids to give up on reading and handcuff them in poverty. You got to add water. I do have to have water? Okay. If you don't think this approach works, take a look at these butterflies. One class has been here for just a few weeks. They're working hard to get it right. So all you have to do is turn your brush over. The other has been at the Early Learning Academy for six months. The person that paints pictures is called an artist. 
So you're an artist today. Cheryl Howard, who taught in local public schools for decades, says the children are learning other critical skills as well. They have learned to share. <laughs> They've learned to be kind to their friends. Um, they come in with so much love every day that it, I go home with a full heart every day. Hi. Kira Jamison, mother of two boys in the program, says she believes the school has helped her sons, Remy and Grayson, not just get ready to read, but with their social skills. They're both sharing. Um, we did have a problem with that at first because they're so close in age. Um, so they're sharing now and they're communicating with each other so well. And it's all from here. Thank you, Chef. Progress like this is what gives Pastor Josel hope. If you're educated, you can stand. If you're illiterate, you walk with your head down. Are you optimistic? When you see those little three-year-olds over there, the brightness of their face, it tells you that these kids can go anywhere with a helping hand. Let's go get on the bus. I have hope now. I'm, this, this is not gloom and doom. Okay. I'm excited because at a particular time, Whitman County is going to rise. That's, that's just the way it is. This is, my, this is my total belief. A belief founded on some very real kids growing and learning. See y'all in the morning. Cynthia McFadden, NBC News, Quitman County, Mississippi. Nightly Films is sponsored by Pfizer. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.